Okay, goals of this talk annoy you. That's the primary goal of this talk. Secondary goal is to teach you something, but mostly annoy you. Okay, aggregate types, what are they? They're either a built-in array type or a class type without any of these things. They must not have any user declared or inherited constructors, non-public data members or base classes or any virtual base class or member function. This is an example of an aggregate. Struct person, as a name, as an age, doesn't matter if string itself is not an aggregate, an aggregate can be composed of things that are not aggregates. Then we have a couple. It's composed of two per people, so two objects of type person, that's also an aggregate. What can we do with these things? We can do aggregate initialization, which means we can use curly braces to initialize the members of these types in order, in the order in which they are defined in the types themselves. You can do this with person, with couple, it just works. Uh, you can also initialize the person objects inside couple directly with curly braces while you're initializing couple. You know, you can kind of like nest this sort of syntax indefinitely and it just works. This is all stuff you could have done in C as well. You just need to put an equal sign before the, after the name of the, of the object. And this is maybe something a little bit more interesting. You can also omit the braces of the inner objects. This is called brace elision. And basically, the compiler is going to figure out that Alice and 35 go to the first object, and Bob and 33 go to the second person. So this is something that you can do also with any sort of aggregate. In 20, we now have designated initializers, where you can basically use the dot name of a member syntax to specify what, which members you are initializing. They still need to appear in the same order in which they are declared, but it helps a lot for readability and to skip some of the members if you want. And in 20, we also have this weird thing where you can now do aggregate initialization using round parentheses. So this is totally valid in 20. You can say person p3, open round parens, carl 60, close round parens, and this will perform aggregate initialization, even though there is no constructor or nothing like that. Okay. This comes from this paper. It's why do we do this? Uh, I'm going to show you later. But there are some differences between the curly braces and round parentheses. We do not allow brace elision. We don't have lifetime extensions for temporaries to you know, be more consistent with actual constructor calls. And there is no guaranteed order of evaluation. With aggregates, curly braces is going to be left to right. This is going to be whatever the compiler wants. Why do we do this? Mostly the motivation for this was that emplacement didn't work with aggregates. So if you try to call emplace back on something which didn't have a constructor, it didn't work because internally emplace back tries to call um, the placement new operator on the type you want to create using round parentheses. So the choices were do we actually change emplace back to branch a compile time whether something is an aggregate or not? or uh, do we do this? But this was uh, deemed as a more general solution because it would also work in the future with user-defined types and so on. Okay. What can you do with this syntax? If you call pushback, you can do it, you know, creating a person, you can use the curly braces, but of course you cannot do the same as emplacement. You have to provide an object to pushback, something that exists. With emplaceback, you can provide an object, but it's a bad idea because it defeats the purpose of emplaceback. You might as well just use pushback. You cannot use the curly braces on their own because you cannot deduce the type of person from just the curly braces, the template deduction issue. And of course, you can do what it's meant to, which is passing just Alice and 35 is going to take these arguments and construct the person directly inside the buffer we're supposed to, avoiding one uh, move or copy operation. And now we get to this. I have a vector of std array int and of three elements. I can push back an array using CTAD here. I can push back the curly braces. But of course, I cannot just push back the values. And now with emplace back, I can push back an array. I cannot push back the curly braces list as we've seen before, but I cannot even push back the values. So we did all this work for nothing. We cannot still emplace std array, which was what part of the initial motivation of this proposal. So this frustrates me, and I wanted to frustrate you as well. That was the goal of my talk. Uh, why is this happening? Very quickly, because array has a member inside, which is an array, uh, a built-in array. So when you write array into 3102, you're actually writing syntactic sugar for the double braces. It's performing brace elision. But since we mentioned it's not allowed for parents, then that's why it doesn't work in that case. And yeah, there's no way to emplace a state array. Takeaways. Uh, Aggregate types, we learned all of these things in five minutes. Thank you so much. I have 10 seconds and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>